Shanghai is it is the the crown jewel in the Tesla factory family so far. You know, it's it's going to make a million cars this year, which would make it the most productive factory in the world, I assume. Uh, it is uh, an absolute beast. So let's talk about Germany, because I think in Germany, something happened with the Model Y line as well, like we've heard, because they pumped out Maybe you want to tell the audience, but uh, sure. yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they hit a peak run rate of 6,000 a week. That's almost 1,000 a day. And mm -hmm. uh, they could make even more. It appears that the supply chain is fully normalized once again. There was a delay because some parts coming from Asia uh, got stuck in the Red Sea and had to take the long route mm -hmm. around Africa like explorers of old. And that has been resolved. You wait the extra two weeks it takes, and now your supply chain is back up to speed. There's rumor, and I don't think it's rumor anymore, that Berlin will be expanded for production of the compact. We've seen where it's yep. going to go. We've seen the preliminary permits. We've seen the community north, meeting about the it. The north, yeah. Yeah, the oh, north exactly. area there. And they've got it all cleared and... Uh, Ordnance removed, because that's a thing that you have to consider <laughs> in former war zones. Sadly, and yes. Sadly, yes. They've got a train station going in there for commuter rail. Everything is more or less ready for them to pounce at the appropriate time. We know that despite the rumors that Germany is going to take forever to build, they built it really quick. They built it about as fast as Texas built Giga Texas if you back out the three months of pandemic shutdown for construction workers. Mm -hmm. Yes, record airport, speed. For Germany, that's re insane. What, what Tesla, yeah, it's absolutely insane absolutely. what they did there. The, the airport took 20 years, but that wasn't because <laughs> construction took 20 years. It's because the politics took 20 years, as I understand it. Now, there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, there's. So what's going on in Berlin? Maybe you have better answers than I do, but I see that they've got 6,000 a week would put them at a run rate of 350,000. We know the nameplate capacity is what, 450, I think? Mm -hmm. So that would be real close to where they are now. So there's a bit of room to expand production within the existing uh, footprint. And I mm -hmm. think they could increase it even further just by adding shifts. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I also think... Um it's very interesting to see now because they hit this uh, production rate. If you look at the incentives or what Tesla does to drive sales actually in Germany, and that's also a big deal maybe because they offered a zero percent financing for uh, for company cars actually, and that's a big thing because then some companies jumped already on that deal, and I've read also on X some some people already said, oh, we're gonna tell that my boss immediately <laughs> because as as you know, but probably the audience maybe don't know because. Most of them are from the U.S. In Germany, actually, the ownership of cars is around 70 percent is actually company cars. So this means that for me as a worker, I get a kind of incentive. Oh, if you work for us, you're going to get a company car and stuff like this. That's how you they bait you into a slavery there. So <laughs> 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 to say it a little bit over exaggerated. But um, yeah, that's what they do. And, and that's why this leave. offers. I can't leave. I've got Please. a Model 3. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but it's very interesting. Actually, this this point that I made uh, has a background because actually in Germany it's very difficult to have multiple jobs at one time. That's that's what they don't want actually. So they want to have you at one employer. That's the system that we have. So there are a lot of incentives to actually tie you to the to the company you you work for. But with that comes also a lot of benefits, like the company car or something like this. So incentives or something like this. Yeah, to keep the worker happy. Brian, okay. let's go to the next one that produces Model Ys. Do we have a factory still that produces Model Ys or are we done for the audience? Well, Maybe for someone who's not familiar with Tesla. I mean, do you mean Shanghai? Because we touched yeah. on it just briefly. Yes. Okay, yeah. let's let's go a little more in depth on Shanghai. They're just a, a, a car producing machine is what they are. When you say the factory is the machine that builds the machine, this machine is well oiled and complete. If you look at some of the other ones, Fremont is a old factory that still works. It's not ideal, but it works. If you look at uh, Berlin and Texas, there's still construction sites that happen to build cars. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Shanghai is done. 
All they do is little improvements here and there. Sometimes they'll take uh, the factory down for a few days or a week to do a big change. I don't know how big of a change it is, but they immediately come back faster than before. And Shanghai is, it is the, the crown jewel in the Tesla factory family so far. You know, it's, it's gonna make a million cars this year, which would make it the most productive factory in the world, I assume. Uh, it is uh, an absolute beast. In terms of Model 3, it appears they are back to as high a number as we could expect. And in terms of Model Y, they never slowed down. This week, mm -hmm. I think they might be a little quiet because uh, it's a holiday. But mm -hmm. beyond that, I assume they'll come back refreshed and ready to get back to it and crank out a number of units hitherto unseen. So they will have an opportunity to do that. There's all kinds of markets that Tesla is still expanding into. And when it comes to anything really on in that part of the hemisphere, Shanghai is going to be the factory where they build them. There are only a few exceptions, uh, countries that do not want imports from mainland China. So, mm -hmm. th but those are the exception rather than the rule. And there are plenty of places that still want more that can't get them. So that mm -hmm. factory, it's just <laughs> solid. I don't, e I don't even think about it. It's that one worker you have who's always there. You never need mm -hmm. to double check his work. It's just working. Yeah. And also one advantage that Shanghai has is also the factory of BYD right next door, right? They, they've built out there, didn't they? Or, or did I? Oh, the, just... the battery factory? Yeah. Oh, that's the CATL. Has a battery oh, factory. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mixed it up. Sorry. Very close. Yeah. Within within eyesight of the yeah. of the factory, yeah. and that is coming online now, basically. And mm -hmm. CATL famously makes a lot of LFP batteries. It could be possible that those batteries will be going into the Mega Pack factory that's going to be built. Mm -hmm. That we, there was mm -hmm. a groundbreaking ceremony where no ground was actually broken, and we don't know where it was, and the location is as yet unknown. It could be that that factory. <laughs> is already tooling. It could be that they just <laughs> yeah. moved into an, ex well, in Lathrop, that was mostly an existing factory. They just added onto it a little bit. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of reason to believe that that CATL factory is in some way directly related to Tesla. We know that mm -hmm. Tesla buys batteries from all of the biggest manufacturers in the world with the exception of SK Innovations and I think Samsung are the only mm -hmm. two major battery manufacturers. LG batteries go into the cars from uh, in Europe and some in China. The BYDs have been going into the threes in China, the Panasonics in the US. There's, yeah, everybody, if you got some batteries, let me know because we're in the market. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's super interesting what's happening there. Also, um, you've touched on the point of import taxes and stuff like this, because Germany is fearing absolutely the Chinese competitors, especially the BYD seal, for example, already came came onto our markets here uh, and stuff like this. And um, now they're dis discussing. That's why I also bought the Model 3 last year, because um, this year they wa the German government or Europe wanted to raise actually the import tax on China. That's what they discussed. But if they will follow through is the other thing. But interesting thing to keep an eye on there, because yeah, they like the German car manufacturers fear the Chinese manufacturers absolutely because every news outlet uh, in Germany touched on this. Like this is the big topic that China will take over our car and, market here, including, and, of course, yeah. And I think it's more fear than reality. The mm -hmm. and, and you and I have talked about this. When a car is made mm -hmm. in, in China, they go, oh my gosh, look at all these $20,000, $15,000 cars that are made. Those are not export grade vehicles, not in terms of safety, not in terms of comfort, not in terms of reliability. By the time you make a car that's sufficient uh, of sufficient quality and safety and durability for an export market, it's no longer a bargain basement car. If you look at MG is not appreciably cheaper than its uh, European competitors. And the same is true with Xiaopeng and Li Auto and all of those. Mm -hmm. the, there was a great review I saw of a, I think it was the Xiaopeng 9 or 7 or whatever it was, head-to-head -head against the Model 3 refresh. And I'll be honest, in that review, uh, the I liked the styling of the Chinese car better. It was aggressive and cool. In terms of the 0 to 60, it beat the Tesla because it was designed to beat the Tesla. That's what it was designed to do. <laughs> but then in terms the of everything else... The camera sees the Tesla, so it's got to, okay, well, uncork the battery. 
<laughs> right. They will. I mean, if we can uncork it just this much to beat it on the zero to 60, mm -hmm. on every other test, the Tesla came in a little bit better mm -hmm. in terms of the usability, in terms of the interface, in terms of the experience overall. But the biggest one was the weight. The Chinese mm -hmm. car that looks no different was 800 pounds heavier. Jeez. That's... That's, that's a lot. That's, that's that another should, car almost. <laughs> that should tell you that their engineering has not caught up. They can, you can brute force any problem into a solution. And that's what they did. That, that extra weight will come down, but the car is not substantially cheaper than the model three. Mm -hmm. And if they're both about the same price, wouldn't you rather get one from a company that has more service centers, has, uh, is mm -hmm. definitely going to be around in a couple of years for your warranty repairs and has already sold millions of units so you mm -hmm. know it's going to last or at least have a, a very good guess as to how mm -hmm. its long-term performance is going to be. So the Chinese cars, once you factor in the shipping and the import tax and raising it to the level of quality that it needs to be for the European market, the fear is drastically overblown. And these companies are not even, most of them are not even selling at a profit yet. So mm -hmm. you got to remember most of the parts of your car were not built by humans, but robots and robots get paid the same in every country. Yeah, that's true. And now um, also Tesla being one of the few companies that actually localize production, they We're kind of doing or starting this trend. I mean, BYD, for example, also wants to start uh, now a factory in, um, I think it was Hungary, in Europe. And this is a good move because when they change the import tax laws, then, yeah, you cannot tax uh, sales from Hungary, actually. So that's, oh, it makes me hungry talking about Hungary now. But uh, <laughs> Really? Because Turkey does yeah. that to me. Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> but that's not a part of Europe <laughs> yet. yet. No, but, yeah, okay. but it does. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's food. <laughs>